Hi guys, this is Cindy with Easy Sue Productions. Welcome to my channel and today is another update for the Rattlesnake Ridge and today is January 21st, 2018. So for today's video, it'll be a short clip of me and then we're going to have a clip of our my geologist giving a discussion and answering questions, okay? All right, so first of all, I just want to mention that I'm excited that the city has installed lamps and they had them before in the south side and now they've included lamps to the west. So I'm really excited um, because all that place is lit up and uh, it's actually showing areas that we've been watching. So, all right, so thank you um, for coming by and if you haven't subscribed yet and you like our videos, please remember to subscribe and share. This is really important. Um, just today we had a, a person comment and they're part of the evacuated residents. So this is really important guys. Um, we really appreciate your concerns as well. Thank you very much. And this is Cindy with Easy C Productions. Good day, everyone. Uh, we wanted to take a moment to go through uh, some questions, uh, concerns that we had received on previous videos uh, about the Rattlesnake Ridge landslide. Um, one of the main, I think, points uh, that we took away from that, at least one of them anyway, was... Um, the use of explosives to alleviate this problem or end it, so to speak. And I think uh, the Washington um, State Department of Transportation on their blog, and this was reiterated through a press conference on Friday, I believe, um, that uh, I, I, and I, and I tend to agree that the use of explosives here would not be uh, a very prudent way to go about this. Um, and as it, as it states here, if we start removing material blasting it from the hillside, it will actually make the area more unstable, creating fissures in other areas and will likely release larger amounts of debris in an uncontrolled manner. I would tend to agree with that first statement wholeheartedly. Uh, we, um, in, a, in an operation such as this, um, blasting can't really solve all the problems in one shot and, um, to uh, illustrate that a little bit, uh, bring up a schematic that we used um, in the Oppenheimer Ranch project with Diamond uh, back on the 10th. Um, we have to, if blasting were to occur in here, um, we could only, I think, physically possible to basically cut it like a cake. You can't run explosives the full length of this from the apex of the crack to the end and blow that entire thing out of there. It would have to come off pretty much in layers like like I said, like cutting a cake. Um, and I do believe that would certainly make uh, this, this slope that much more unstable and then just that much more unpredictable. Um, as it says here, when we blast, it's in very small sections. And then we excavate the loose material after the blast. Um, and an unstable slope such as this one, um, it will be constantly unstable. Um, it it would, and not to mention extremely dangerous. Um, I just don't know of anybody that would go in and do that. Beyond the points that they're bringing up here, um, as we said, the safety of the workers that would actually be doing the work um, to drill holes through an active landslide and we can't reiterate that enough this is active um, we to put crews and machinery up there and with hydraulic tools and an excess of water air pressure things like that i think the crews may actually initiate the land, have better chance of initiating the landslide rather than the obvious of setting explosives to remove it um, and the point was brought up that and I would tend to agree as well that if there was a malfunction and explosives were left down there they would have to be excavated and taken out carefully again I just don't know who would be willing to do that I don't um, I certainly wouldn't do it um, and again we're talking I think I may have on past broadcast have Put the figure of how much rock it may be at 10 million i'm hearing 4 million 5 million 6 million cubic yards let's just for the sake of argument let's just say four to six um, 
I don't think we really know how much there will be, but that's needless to say, that's quite a bit of rock. Um, hopefully that answers, or at least partly answers that question. But yes, it's incredibly, incredibly dangerous at this point because we have reached the point of no return with this particular landslide. It is active and it is sliding. Um, maybe a year ago, that might have been the way to go with this, and it may have worked. Uh, but at this point, um, a, con a controlled explosion would, and who knows? I mean, who knows where the rock would go, um, where it would end up, and I think it just puts too much, too much responsibility on those that would be doing it to ensure public safety in this kind of operation. So, I, again, I just don't think that is a viable as easy as it sounds i just don't think that's a viable way to go about this um since we have it up i um, want to just touch on this a little bit that it is does appear to be a slow moving slide um we did we don't really know why it's moving so slow but we do have to emphasize here that as with any landslide uh it could happen at a moment's notice so what's slow today might be lightning tomorrow so we can't um ex you know, we can't enough um what this what what this entails really um we can say slow moving now but we'll see um anyway i hope that um relieves some of the questions in that but generally speaking that's um that's the that's the nutshell version of that um the next topic i think that was brought up and kind of went unanswered is what caused this um and i think the best way to go about that is to start with our old friend the angle of repose and as it states here the angle of repose or critical angle of repose of a granular material is the steepest angle or descent or dip relative to the horizontal plane in which the material can be piled without slumping this being the horizontal plane, and as you can see, the angle of repose right in here. Um, and that's what we're concerned with here is how much material can be piled without slumping. Um, we go back to our quarry diagram. Um, we see a general you know, sl a slope here of, you know, take my word for it, about 30, 40 degrees. Do we see where that angle of repose has been disrupted um, I do so that is one aspect if we agree with that if we agree that the the original angle of repose of this particular slope again at a 30 40 degree angle here has been disrupted then the next thing I think we need to look at um, is our old friend Newton's first law um, which in a nutshell an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force again we go back to the quarry diagram do we see an unbalanced force I do so I think with those two elements in place, I do think we see some causation for this particular landslide, why it started, um, without getting into too much else about this. I think that's, um, I just think those were important, two important notes to take out of this. Um, you know, the angle of repose and Newton's first law are very critical in this, very simple. And I would say with most landslides, you could probably come to the same conclusion using the same thing so hopefully that answers that a little bit i will leave it to you to delve further into this but we'll certainly be happy to answer any questions or comments as best we can but um, i think in a nutshell we we just got to go to simple science here to describe things that are in this case are relatively simple um, and so hopefully, like I said, that covers that. Um, the next thing I would like to go to is, oh, let's see. Okay, yes, let's go to the pictures, um, which my trusted cohort 
has been doing a very diligent job of and a, and a well and a very good job of putting in daily giving me daily pictures to um, describe so I can describe the landslide and what things are happening this particular picture was taken on the 20th um, we look back and I found some interesting aspects of this when I looked at the 20th I went back to the 16th again another fine picture um, and, I, and as we can see and we've documented this quite a bit um, the failure surface that we're currently seeing beyond the fissure on the eastern side um, I do believe yes there are two sides to this um, and we'll get into this maybe in another another segment about what type of failure this is but in a nutshell I'm thinking that this is somewhat of a, a wedge failure where there are two separate sides um, that's the way we categorize it in landslide terminology again that still qualifies as a translational slide we will get into that a little bit in a minute but that's why I'm looking at this in as much as we don't have a lot of access to the eastern fissure and quite frankly they're documenting that quite well to be honest so I'm gonna kind of leave that as it is but um, we're concentrating very much on the west face because we have seen and as you saw in another video um, the previous one that we had documented the beginnings of this and we can see now just even on the 16th that it has come more pronounced but we go to the 20th just recently which is yesterday good job see and we see so I see some drastic differences here um, the first thing that just jumps right out at me and I think we documented these before were the scarps on the lower face and just for review um, let's you know what a scarf face is a fault scarp is a small steep step or offset excuse me on the ground surface where one side of the fault is moved vertically with respect to the other um, you know, I'm not gonna necessarily call this uh, an active fault but it's the same general processes um, and at the bottom here we see scarps and based on the historical data that I've looked up these scarps have been here for quite a while um, the ones up here however I have not this is new um, and this is a vertical offset within the area that we have pretty much determined that there is a great deal of energy getting uh, building up and that makes sense I mean if that's true and there is energy building up in this general area um, it, it leads me to believe that yes pressure is building here and at least this part of the this part of the slope has moved vertically you know, a fault nevertheless um, the uh, and just to look back again I don't see in the photo from the 16th I don't see any scarps we see this little hump here just for reference we look here we see the little hump here we don't see this scarp right here um, that's alarming to me a little bit again we don't see any scarps here at all so uh, and not to belabor the point but let me back off a little bit here just be a little little bit clearer we do see that the failure surface as I'm calling it on the western face is becoming very much more pronounced from a distance um, another aspect that I'm seeing here to what extent I'm not sure what what's um, it entails but we do see these little discolorations here um, which I believe are seeps of water um, C has documented throughout the week how much rain has fallen on the site and I think we're seeing a response here um, meaning that there are interstitial openings at least enough of them to allow the water to seep out but that's what I think this is, is just muddy water um, seeping out of the hillside and that's not a good thing um, and I think just for review we'll take a look real quick at this particular area um, we did show 
on the previous broadcast we did show a level of stress being applied to this area so we will show it again just to um, just to put bring the point home a little bit um, this image hit by the Seattle Times which I as I explained then is extremely impressive um, again we see the stress building up in this particular area and that would make sense it would it very much makes sense that a scarp would form right along this general area pushing up as you can see the rock is kind of twisting and pushing up um, you know a minor scarp per se but a scarp nevertheless and that that is a clear indication that we do have some pretty significant movement within what the last four or five days um, that's I kind of in some ways you know I want to look at the 1.6 feet per per week or whatever there um, let's let's be accurate with that uh, yes 1.6 feet per week um, that's going to change um, as this builds up it may slow the rate down because this is building up and again as we said landslides of every nature are can happen in a moment's notice so when this pressure in this case a pretty much looks like most of the resisting force um, has has been expended this is coming down um, again a very impressive video and um, I urge everybody to this is probably still on the Seattle Times uh, website take a look at it run it um, but it's a really really neat encapsulation of just one month's time and that's a lot of movement in one month's time um, as we demonstrated on the 10th um, on the Oppenheimer Ranch project on Diamond Show we we had made a determination that this was the possible slide plane and that looks according to this drawing that looks very reasonable as you can see right there um, I tend to debate a little whether or not this is all going to come off in pieces as has been reported because as you can see this whole thing's moving at once I mean, it looks at to me I could be wrong but let's look at this entire mass from apex to the slide is moving as this area right here is is building up pressure and this just this again the southwest area just seems to be the main resisting forces in this landslide but I'm, I'm repeating myself for the most part but um, you know another another aspect of just to go back a little bit um, in the angle of repose situation um, you know friction in this case is a uh, is, is part of the driving force here and uh, when I say resisting forces that's what I'm talking about is the friction and friction is the force resisting the relative motion of solid surfaces um, and there's a neat little diagram right here um, you know of static friction this is probably pretty close to what we're looking at but down there I'm sure there are elements of soil layers down there um, it's been reported that there are I have no reason to believe that there isn't um, but I think the slow movement is because there, there are so many rough surfaces here um, but again uh, it's not going to take much to with that much weight and that much mass to break this and um, send this landslide into motion so um, other than that I don't think we have really anything drastically new to report um, we will obviously keep up on this and concentrate on the western face for now but um, again I think I see we do see some obvious changes from the 20th um, we will keep an eye on this um, as we have, have as we have been and um, again I thank everyone for watching I thank you for all the questions all the comments I, I really appreciate the concern with this because it is serious um, but again, thank you very much, and we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thank you so much.